Thank you very much for being part of this uh, media conference. I'll straight away request Dr. Patel to take over. Uh, good afternoon, uh, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for uh, attending this media conference. Uh, I know that the media has had to work a little bit harder this time because of the change in time, uh, which has been necessitated uh, not to make things harder, uh, but due to the process and time logistics which is entailed in the committee decision-making mode that we are now in. Uh, we did a scan of central banks and what we have introduced with a mid-afternoon policy uh, decision uh, uh, today in terms of timing is broadly the norm elsewhere. <clears throat> as this is my first press conference as governor, I want to start by acknowledging my colleagues at RBI. I've been associated with the RBI when I was an advisor back in the mid-90s, long before I even became deputy governor. I hold my colleagues in the highest regard and believe RBI has been a truly strong and clean institution in our country. I learn from them and depend on them. I also stand in, on the back of many wise and strong predecessors who have built the character and culture of the institution which RBI employees uphold each and every day. I welcome the MPC members who will be a source of support to RBI and the country and will help to enhance the process and quality of mo monetary policy making in our country. I'll say a few words now on the backdrop, the international backdrop under which this policy has been made. <clears throat> For the first time in a long time, the weak global demand is actually going to drag down trade volumes to decline. It is possible that next week at the IMF meetings, or rather this week, I beg your pardon, there will be a further possible downgrading of global growth. I'll be surprised if there isn't. Thirdly, the systemic central banks of the world continue to pose uncertainty for emerging markets, causing volatility in EMs due to mixed US macro data, as in also in the European Union. There is also, of course, the issue of the outcome of the US presidential elections. I will, uh, uh, I will now take questions. Spogaliaji. Um, the Quint. Congratulations, Dr. Patel, for your first policy. I think the new mechanism of UTC, we are very curious to know about that. Uh, how has it taken off, and how are you going to navigate it? Uh, you know, uh, we have been meeting over the last day and a half, uh, going through presentations, discussions, uh, drafting, uh, and coming to a conclusion on, uh, on the policy repo rate. Uh, we, have, we have a great MPC. Uh, the three external members are of outstanding pedigree. Uh, they are very well-known academics. Uh, they have been involved in policy making of one sort or another for a long time. And they bring value and a dispersion of opinion, which is what the MPC is about. Our discussions were frank, often intense, but always friendly. We allowed each other to speak 
and we ensured that there is no rancor and that at the end of the day, we agreed on an MPC resolution that we have placed before the country. Thank you. Lata? How much, oh, sorry. Uh, Governor, how much of this policy is a continuation of previous policies? I asked because the word removal of liquidity deficit in the action uh, of the MPC is not there. It was there in the previous policy. So do, do you persist with removal of uh, liquidity deficit and maintaining neutral liquidity? Do you yeah, maintain uh, uh, that? Let me answer that. Yeah. Yes, yes, we do because there is no change in that we have not referred to it. Okay. So, so that, uh, uh, that's absolutely the case. Okay. Thanks, sir. The other uh, uh, two things which... Uh, no, one thing. Uh, Others need a chance. No, no. Only in terms of continuation. 150 to 200 basis point positive real uh, uh, rate uh, was uh, the policy until some time back. Will that uh, persist? As well, will you look at 4% inflation by Jan 2018, as was said in previous policy? Uh, on the, on, the, on the real policy rate, I will turn to Michael. Uh, let me talk about the 4%. Please note that pending the amendment to the RBI Act and associated notifications, RBI indicated its resolve to con contain inflation through self-imposed targets and a framework agreement with the government. Now, all those ad hoc measures are superseded by the legal amendment and the two associated legal notifications in addition to the MPC. Uh, one minute, Talpana. Yeah. Uh, uh, on, the, on the neutral rate. Uh, so the neutral rate, as you know, and we, we put out research on this, is a time-varying concept. It doesn't stay still at a point in time. And changes with things like demographics or the potential output itself. And the world over the sense is that the neutral rate is going down. And that's why you see many countries actually uh, uh, putting in place negative interest rates. That's where they see their neutral rate. So as far as we are concerned, uh, in continuation of what has been articulated before, if you look at the risk-free uh, rate, that is the Treasury bill rate, it's 6.5%. And if you look at ex inflation expectations, which is best exemplified in the RBA's own projections of 5%, so you have 1.5%. But as I said, we need to take into account the global situation where uh, neutral rates are actually declining. So it could be around 1.25 uh, uh, or thereabouts. Uh, can, can I now request uh, uh, both uh, DG Vishwanathan and DG Mundra to speak about uh, the areas uh, related to them and which are partly reflected in Part B. Mr. Vishwanathan, thank you. Uh, among the important announcements that you've made in this policy, I would uh, like to draw your attention to two, two of them. One, of course, is the plan to bring the All India Financial Institutions into the larger Basel type of framework by, uh, by April 2018. In fact, we have been in discussion with the financial institutions and we have already drawn a plan. We'll be issuing the final guidelines in this regard by end of October. The second important announcement uh, is relating to the uh, S4A, which is part of the scheme to deal with the stressed assets. Uh, there was this idea that uh, the sustainable portion of the debt, irrespective of what it was before, when it is sustainable, why it, should it not be classified as standard? So we have agreed to that, and of course, we'll be coming to some final guidelines on that. There'll be certain conditions subject to which it will be done so that you know, it is not uh, used for uh, wrong cases. So, but we'll be coming to the guidelines in those areas by end of, this, uh, end of October. And of course, another is uh, with regard to the small, and small finance bank and payments banks. They know the guidelines. The guidelines are part of the original guidelines that we should when we call for applications. But they wanted the operating guidelines as well so that they know how to operate it. So we discussed that with them, and uh, we're going to come out with that uh, by end of this week. Those are the important numbers that we made from our side. Mr. Mulder? Yeah. Uh, so uh, let me a little bit uh, brief you about the area of supervision and uh, the consumer-related uh, part and the developmental banking. Uh, supervision, as you know, in the given circumstances, uh, the roles are changing and the, the uh, goals are also uh, moving. So particularly, as you know, that couple of years we moved to the risk-based supervision, which was a basic shift in the supervisory approach of Reserve Bank of India. 
we started with few banks last year we expanded the scope uh, but this year the entire banks which we supervise now would be uh, supervised under the risk based approach and uh, uh, keeping in mind the smaller banks uh, our team has also developed a relatively uh, different model to to bring those banks under risk based supervision uh, looking to the development this year supervisory approach would particularly focus on three other areas also which though we are covered but the the uh, you know it will be more extensive and these are the areas of uh, concern on mis-selling concerns around kyc and ml related issues and of course the cyber security continuing the cyber security as we all know that the concerns are increasing so last year again on a pilot basis we started few banks to to inspect them separately on cyber security uh, this year the coverage is being expanded to more than 30 banks and going forward we intend to cover each bank uh, from a viewpoint of separate it risk and the cyber security risk and third also uh, the concern with the the, the uh, rising fraud in the system uh, we have set up a special cell uh, within the supervisory department to track the large size fraud and actually coordinate with other agencies so that the they can be taken to the logical conclusion at a faster pace. So these are the broadly in the area of supervision. In the area of uh, inclusion, uh, we have started work on creating a BC registry and also to design a framework uh, for the BC uh, registration and BG, oh, sorry, BC certification. So those, those are the areas. And uh, finally, in the area of consumer protection, uh, we are uh, working on to uh, review the banking ombudsman scheme by expanding some of its coverage. Uh, we are also opening few new offices of banking ombudsman uh, during the year and uh, the the institution of internal ombudsman has already been put in place and and uh, we are interacting and monitoring the progress thank you I, I just want to add something on the npa um, uh, the npa situation is an important issue for the rbi in india we will deal with the situation with firmness but also with pragmatism so that the economy does not feel any lack of credit to support the growth in the economy but we must remember that the situation has not occurred overnight and therefore will require skill and thoughtful endeavor to resolve. There are four stages, the identification, the recording and reporting of, uh, of this particular subject has been done satisfactorily, but the resolution, which is the fourth leg, is something that we need to work more. In fact, back in 2007 and 2008, the banking sector lent their balance sheets to support the investments in infrastructure. Just five sectors contribute 61% of the stressed assets of the banking sector. Infra, steel, textiles, power, and telecom. These sectors are each individually important, and dealing with stressed assets will require skill and creativity. There are many reasons that led to this situation, but now helping banks to deal with this situation is of the utmost importance for the country. We will move at various levels to address the situation, and we have indeed done so. We are working with the banks and the government on the subject. As you know, we have been at the forefront of improving creditor rights in India, and the bankruptcy bill is an example of this, but like all legislation, will take some time to settle. The RBI and government will work together to deal with some of the issues that emerge. Uh, next, I, I have noted down all the names. I'll come to you one by one. Please bear with us. Govardhan. Dr. Govardhan from the Economic Times. Uh, uh, Dr. Patra mentioned about the real rate being kind of a flexible one. And you have forecast inflation at 4.5% 2017-18. Does that mean that you have a room to uh, what is it, for another 50 to 75 basis points cut in the next uh, few quarters ahead? I mentioned 2016-17 and that the uh, Q4 projection is 5%. So if you deduct 5% from 6.5, which is the risk-free uh, risk rate today, 
you're getting to 1.5 percent. But as I said, globally, there is a tendency of the real ne neutral rate to go down over time. And that is where it is today. So I would discount 1.5 by 25 basis points and say that 1.25 is the real neutral rate. Okay, thanks. Uh, Ira, couple of you know, there's a fair amount of comfort on inflation in this fiscal year, but if you read through the monetary policy report, uh, there seems to be far lesser comfort on getting inflation to that 4% level. In fact, at one point on page 8, uh, you know, where you talk about accounting for HRA increases as and when they happen, uh, you actually say that this may require a tightening of monetary policy stance. Uh, just wondering then why at this stage are we, uh, you know, moving towards even more accommodative policy, which is accommodative both on interest rates and on liquidity, when we seem to have a inherent discomfort on meeting our eventual targets, sir? Well, um, as I said that, uh, you know, after the amendments to the, to the legislation and the associated notifications, uh, uh, the act and, uh, and, and the consequent four plus or minus two uh, is, is what we have to endeavor for. Uh, in fact, if you read our March uh, uh, 2015 statement, that also makes that very clear. Uh, what we have identified are some upside risks, but there are downside risks also. If you see that range, when we talk about 4.5, it's very large. Uh, you know, if I, if I look at uh, uh, over the next seven, eight quarters, uh, the government has introduced structural policy reform policies which is, of course, done to su ease supply constraints. There is larger investment in, in railways and roads, which will in improve infrastructure. The ease of doing business. The proactive food management has played a crucial role in the past two years and will continue to play a crucial role uh, in, in, the, uh, uh, in times to come. That there, there is an improvement in pulses supply, which has been the main, uh, uh, main contributor and there has been a sharp improvement in competitiveness ranking. So while there are issues related to the upside risks, and we have always said that the direct impact of the HRA on the CPI will be looked through. So it's the highly uncertain indirect effects which we'll have to wait for in terms of both how the HRA is going to be implemented and then the consequences thereof. So, uh, so it's, it's in that uh, backdrop uh, where, uh, that that risk has been uh, identified. Indeed, there are some others also. <coughs> Do I have for a uh, no, uh, please. Let let others ask also. Um, this is the last question. We are at three of three p.m. Yes. Yeah. Um, Shobna. So, sir, in the uh, past, the uh, repo cuts haven't really resulted in too much transmission on the part of banks into lower lending rates. In fact, if you look at it, the extent of the cuts, whether in the base rate or now the MCLR is very, very small. So, sir, are you expecting this time that, you know, the banks will pass on this cut in terms of a base rate? Because, you know, that's what will help the larger swathe of borrowers. So, um, I think there are two parts uh, in, uh, uh, in which the answer can be given. One, the transmission through the money markets has been swift and decisive, uh, and, and corporates are using uh, uh, those parts of the financial system uh, uh, more compared to uh, vanilla bank credit. Uh, I agree that, uh, uh, that the transmission to bank lending uh, and to bank borrowers has been less than any one of us would have liked to. Uh, and we are hoping uh, that uh, over the next quarter or two, also keeping in mind that the government has now also reduced the small savings rate. So the government's intention to bring, bring that to the uh, more market related is also been now uh, amplified. Uh, that, that the MCLR calculation itself will now throw up uh, more transmission. Uh, one thing to distinguish is that the new lending, uh, the transmission has been much more uh, 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 in terms of the rates coming down. So it's 3 p.m. We'll stop now. Okay. Thank you. No, uh, sorry, sorry, but uh, we have to manage the time. Thank you very much. We are on a tight schedule today.